We just made these quick cricket crafts for cash, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, Builder to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're creating cricket crafts for cash. <laughs> Something like that. We thought this week that we would make some Cricut crafts for our farmer's market. So not everyone has a glow forge and there's still plenty of things that you can make and sell with a Cricut. So we're gonna make a couple of projects this week and take them to the farmer's market with us. Mine's going to pop. It's yeah, he's awesome. super stoked about his. And I think mine is super cute as well. Um, it's another summer theme. Both yours of these are gonna, summer theme. Yours is gonna flop. Mine's gonna pop. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> it's flip flops. Right. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. I just needed some Aura Mask 813 for my stencil vinyl, an 18 inch round, some paint, my secret weapon, unicorn spit. He's so excited about this unicorn spit. <laughs> my secret weapon. <laughs> and uh, some daubers and paint stuff. And for mine, I'm going to be doing a farmhouse sign. Now, we usually make our farmhouse signs, but for this time, if you didn't have your pocket saw yet, or you don't have your nail gun yet, you can purchase these. We picked up this one at Hobby Lobby and this one at Michael's. So you can make your own, or you can just purchase them. And I needed, for my flip flops, so we can cut this on the Cricut, we're going to do a little scrapbooking, little mixed media. I'll be using some scrapbook paper, some cardstock, some heavy chipboard, and then I have some glitter accents that I'm going to use for some flowers. Some and, Mod Podge. Oh, uh, yeah, some Mod Podge. Whatever these dots are. Pop dots. Pop dots. And I think that's it for mine. You're going to use pop dots on your flip flops? I am going <laughs> to use pop dots on my flip flops. And that is it. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. Really just cutting out our designs. I'm gonna bring my Oracle 813 over to the Cricut. I almost said Blue You Forge. did, I saw it on your face. <laughs> Tells you how often I use it. Over to the Cricut and cut out my design. And while he's doing that, we have a first step on mine. So this is just paper and I did want to use this pattern look. I don't know if you joined our lives or have seen our Facebook group, uh, but we've seen some folks do some reimagining of our pieces yeah. using some scrapbook paper. So I'm going to try that technique today. I think it looks great. So I'm going to take this thin paper and I'm going to stiffen it up with this chipboard. So I'm going to Mod Podge our paper down to our chipboard and then I can take it over to the Cricut and cut it. I'm going to cut it all together. You gotta be careful not to get this too wet because it will try and curl up on you. If it tries to curl up on you, just use a book or something to hold it down while it dries. It'll dry flat again. All right, I have that completely covered. All right, we're gonna set this, let this set and dry. Won't take very long. What would you say? 15? Yeah, 15 minutes. So, minutes or so. And then we're gonna cut it out on the Cricut. This way, we're trying, we're still trying to give this piece a 3D effect. So this chipboard is gonna give it a little bit of elevation. And then like I said, I'm, when I attach it, I'm gonna add these pop dots to give it another 3D. Like another three foot. Yeah, it's a real, real steep elevation on that one. 20 minutes later. I've attached everything to chipboard. I did, I used, for the patterns that we're doing, we're doing patterned flip-flops. Uh, one of them, so welcome is seven letters, so I can only do three pairs of flip-flops and then one single flip-flop. Somebody lost a flop. Yeah, I've lost one flop. And then I'm going to use the flip-flop straps in the solid color. So I did two pieces of cardstock. This one actually isn't paper, this is cardstock, so it's a slightly thicker, but I still mounted them to the chipboard. Still so. give it that depth. All right, so now we can go cut ours. Our chipboard is smaller than our cardstock, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. It doesn't have to be neat so that I can attach it to our Cricut mat. So unless you have a brand new strong grip mat, and even then, 
I would recommend just adding some painter's tape here to make sure this thing doesn't slip and slide uh, while it's cutting in the Cricut because you will be using your uh, knife blade. Knife blade. The knife blade. Okay, here we are in design space. We're gonna go ahead and click make on our project. It's gonna prompt us for our materials. We're gonna browse and select chipboard. We're using the 1.5 millimeter and it prompts you to load your knife blade. I'll do that for you. <laughs> All right, and 12 passes later, we have ourselves a flip-flop. Ungroup my image, hide the background, hide the seeds, attach the top pieces, attach the bottom pieces, then I'm gonna hit make it. I'm gonna adjust it just a smidge. I'm gonna look for some stencil vinyl. And that means I have to put the fine point blade back in. Step three, and now we paint. I'm gonna paint my 18 inch round. I'm gonna use this uh, crinoline country chic one coat. And then while he's doing that, we have our flip flops and our, um, I don't know, what is that? Toe straps. Toe straps. All cut on the chipboard. Now my flops are looking a little flat. She's got a case of the flat flops. I got a flat flop. It's just looking boring and it needs some dimension. So. Stepped on a pop top. <laughs> Blew up my flip flop. <laughs> All right. So we're going to add a little antiquing wax, our country chic antiquing wax. You see, it's very dark in color, but I think if we have put a little of this on the edges, it's going to give it that 3D dimension. Make it pop. You'll have a pop flop. Yeah, we'll have a pop flop. Yes. And you can find this in our store. It is called Antiquing Wax. That's what it's called. And you can see it's got that real dark color to it. So I tried a couple of techniques. I already tested this out on a fake flop. Fake and flop. I used the, um, the Antiquing Wax brush here, but this was too much. This was too big, too much. So I'm just going to apply it with a little bit of a paper towel, a couple layers of a paper towel, a little dab in there. And then I'm just going to brush the edges. Uh oh, got it on my finger. Uh oh. You're just gonna smudge it around. Yeah, I'm just gonna smudge it around now. So I'm just brushing it around the edges here. Again, I'm just trying to give it a little bit of dimension. Step four, and now we're gonna put the designs on the board. My 18 inch round is all dry. My stencil's all weeded. I have my transfer tape on it. And I got my secret weapon in the chamber. <laughs> Super stoked. We'll see how it turns out. So I'm just gonna add my stencil to my 18 inch round. That stencil looks big, is that gonna fit? Yeah. It's off the round. You're off your round. <laughs> okay. Let's see, and bring this down then. It fits. It fits. That's how I designed it. Okay. Let's do yeah. it. Let's oh, do it. Let's I'm do in. it. I'm going in. Speaking of fitting, my flop array is a little <laughs> bit wider. Your flop a bow? My, it's flop array. Flop array is a little wider than my farmhouse signs. So I am going to have to squeeze them in a little. Like it fits on the bigger sign that I had, but then they look too small. And this one, I guess I misjudged the length of that. So we're just gonna make it work, you'll see. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also add some 3D dimension here and I'm going to apply these with pop dots. Oh, so, pop dots. Yep, I'm going to make them kind of... Double dimensioned. Well, it's actually going to be like quadruple... Quadruple dimension. Quintuple dimension. Quintuple. <laughs> the because, most dimensions ever done on a sign. Because I'm going to pop dot the flip flops and then I'm going to... 
pop dot the toe strap and then I just found these in my collection of scrapbook materials so you might you'll find something similar in your own flowers but these are already glitter chipboard cut out flowers and I layered them stacked three on there and I have them in several different color sets and like I said I already had them so I'm gonna put them right on here and I'm going to well they're also three stacked so they're triple dimension Whoa, as triple well <laughs> on top of the yeah. already dimensions yep you just went all out with all dimensions huh yes all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start that while you well I put my stencil down yeah continue what you've got going on over there continue to wrestle with this thing Oh, hey, can you grab that for me? Oh, oh no. no. Oh no, what's happening? I'm just in the middle of a glue dot. I can't. Safe. Safe. Yes. Oh no. All right, well, I'll do that one later. <laughs> Ever happened to you? <laughs> Let's see if I can pull this one off now that it's all mangled. I'm gonna have to redo my entire jam because <laughs> it was well, jam, all right. The stencil got all st stuck to everything. It was like fly paper. We were stuck to it. It was stuck to itself. It was stuck to the watermelon. It was a mess. And then I am using the Oracle stuff, but it's peeling the paint right off. So I'm gonna have to paint the board again. See, I just peeled the paint. The white paint came right off. So I'm going to lay another coat of paint down and recut my stencil. Meanwhile, Yay. mine's going great. Just taking it one step at a time. Oh, swimmingly. <laughs> are all dry everything is glued down and dry so now I'm going to attach them to the board and I think for this step I debated on glue dots but I have just the foam version there is a like a jelly gluey version but I don't have any of those right now so I'm going to use our um, glue gun here our Ryobi glue gun so let me just go ahead and get to it mine is pretty much done Looking sweet! Look at that thing, man. It looks like a real watermelon. Yeah, well, you it's, a, bite? it's a drama with that real watermelon. You want to bite? Yeah, but in the end, you know, this is the second, second time's a charm. You need some help?
Step five, and now we have the accents. It's really just some ribbon, <laughs> doing a ribbon, and then I'm making a bow, a tiny bow, because I don't want to take away from my a giant watermelon. And Kim's trying to figure out a hanger. Yeah, so mine does have a little hanger right here in the center on the back, um, but I think this ribbon, this but this, yeah, ribbon is going to give it a little pop. So I'm going to staple this onto the back of it. Actually, Garrett's going to do it for You're me. You're going to hold it? Do not get my fingers. All right, I'll try not to get your fingers. Ooh, that worked perfectly. Perfect. All right, just let me let me double check the spacing on that so it doesn't look wonky. Three and a half. Ooh, dead eye. All dead right. eye. Oh gosh, that's so perfect. This staple gun never works this perfectly. Yeah, staple gun always jams. It's always jamming up. I will jam you up. All right, I need how much ribbon? Like that much. Um, you have to tie a little knot in the back, so yeah, yes, yeah, about right there would be good. Right. Let me share how long that is, just so. Okay. It goes to my <laughs> armpit. All right, could you just it's like my sleeve length? Woo. Twenty, so twenty-four. Cool, twenty-four inches. All right, I have little slots on the top of my board. I'm just gonna poke my uh, ribbon through. Boop, boop. Tie a knot. I'm just making a quick bow. All I'm going to do is stack a few pieces of ribbon, just contrasting, contrasting yet coordinating maybe. <laughs> I want them to be different colors, but I want them to be in the same like summer theme. Like family. Maybe family. I don't think that's it either. Anyway, they're about eight inches long and I'm just going to kind of put them in an X, stack them one on top of the other, scrunch them up together and add a little of this wire ribbon. Ribbon wire. Did I say that backwards too? Hmm? It's opposite day. Yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Ooh, your third hand. Good. Is that my ribbon? No. Oh, I have to make my own ribbon? I already made yours. Oh, okay. Thank God. <laughs> it needs a bow. So, bad news here is I don't have any... I don't have any wire ribbon with summer colors, so we're gonna do it with this just... Cartoon colors. Well... Circus colors? Yeah, well, it's not even that. It's just the fact that that's, um, this gross green. Yeah, it doesn't really say, but it doesn't have a wire, and but I don't have a wire, so I'm just going to have to go with what I've got. What well, I've got, 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 i I didn't even get my finger in there. Just trying to get you guys a shot. Too, Too slow. slow. Too slow. All right, now just tie your uh, bow right there, and I'm going to tie it in the same place on mine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's the ticket. Doing good, Kim. Doing good. All right, yeah, that's how you do it, yeah. Now give it another knot, yep. Teaching her how to do ribbons. Ribbons, that's what he's calling it. The old ribbons. Teaching her how to do ribbons. Teaching her how to do ribbons. All right, I'm just gonna take these both outside and hit it with some crystal clear by Rust-Oleum. Everybody's always asking, this is our stuff right there. We notice some of the other stuff gets a little hazy. Alright, 
what do you guys think? Quick, easy, cricket crafts for cash. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't, couldn't fit any more sounds in there. What do you guys think? I think they're cute. What do you guys think of this uh, unicorn spit? It's a stain, but I just tried to use it as a paint because I knew it'd be translucent and kind of make it look like a real watermelon. Yeah, I love I love this stuff. I love how sparkly it is. I mean, who so wouldn't sparkly. love it all sparkly? Yeah, that's gonna very be very cute. A, it's gonna be a hot seller, hot summer sellers. And our little flip flops here again. We sell this SVG in our store, so you can use this SVG to cut it on your Glowforge or cut it on your Cricut. Garrett does try and create files yep. for both Cricut and Glowforge because you might want to do different things. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah, you so can use it to make a, whichever whichever method or there's a layered version and a cutter. version that's all separate. So whatever you need, I got you. And if it doesn't work on your machine, hit me up. I'll fix it. All right, it's about that time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And that patron after show is going to be a good one this week. We had some drama. We're going to talk about some of our drama. Well, that and some patrons ask questions and we're going to answer them. A little Q&A. Yep. A little AMA. Q&A. Woo. And Is it going to hit me? Is it going to hit me? <laughs>